guys, it's Emily and Milo, and we're here to bring you a recent reads video. I've read four books since I last talked to y'all, so I figured I'd run through them pretty quick. The first book that I finished since I last spoke to y'all was The Winter Cro The Winter Crown by Elizabeth Chadwick. I called this The Winter Queen in my last video. This is The Winter Crown, and it's the second book in her um, Eleanor of Aquitaine's trilogy and this follows Eleanor from age 30 to age 40 or approximately around there and Eleanor during this time is predominantly um, in her childbearing years and so much of the book is taken up with her bearing six children within 10 years which is you know quite a lot and so we see her going through pregnancy and motherhood but then we also see the like political intrigue of um, Henry's court and there's issues going on with France and there's issues going on with Spain and it's about just Eleanor's role and all of that and her role and her family and this was very engaging and the imagery is very beautiful. Eleanor is not um, as active in the political intrigue as she was in the first book, which you can guess from her being pregnant. And back then, you know, when you were pregnant, you were pretty much considered, you know, worthless, sad to say. But so she was very away from court a lot and things like that. So there is more focus on other perspectives in this book, whereas the first book was predominantly Eleanor. This one has takes off and follows other people that are close to Eleanor as well. But yeah, I really am enjoying this series and I'm looking forward to reading The Autumn Throne in the autumn. The next book I finished was Jane Austen Made Me Do It, which is edited by Laurel Ann Natris, and this is a collection of 25 short stories. These are very easy to read short stories. Um, I initially was reading one a day, and then they were so easy to read, I bumped it up to two a day, and then on the weekends I was reading three a day, so I got through this a lot quicker than I expected. This these stories basically have something to do with Jane Austen. There's books, or books, there's stories that follow Jane Austen herself, there's stories that follow characters from one of her stories, and then there's um, stories that follow modern day people as Jane Austen influences them in some capacity. There are two stories where a modern person meets Jane Austen's ghost, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So that was kind of fun. So this was just a really cute book. I think I mentioned before, this is technically book 11.5 in the Jane Austen mystery series by Stephanie Baird. However, only one of the stories in here is by Stephanie Baird, and it doesn't you don't have to have read the series to read the one story in here. It doesn't give you any major plot points or anything. So I would say anybody that's interested in Jane Austen would be the, you know, the candidate to read this, this collection. It's very interesting and fun, and it's a, a good way to pass a few minutes every day. I then finished The Art of the English Murder by Lucy Worldsley, and I'm going to actually do a whole video on this during March Mystery Madness, so I won't talk about it too much here. But basically, this is this just follows murder as a form of entertainment in England, starting out from like way back in the 1600s when public hangings were a big deal, going into like the publication of newspaper articles about murders and then moving into books and then moving into radio and then moving into movies. So it just shows all the different forms that murder took in, in entertainment throughout the years in England. It discusses, you know, a lot of the people that we know and love today, Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie, Alfred Hitchcock, um, just um, a Mary Elizabeth Braddon is mentioned, and I know she was mentioned, she was, people were reading her during October last year. Um, Willie, Wilkie Collins is mentioned in here, and I will say, I'm planning to read The Moonstone during March Mystery Madness, and this book spoiled the ending for that, so if you've never read The Moonstone, don't read this book, or at least skip the chapter on sensation novels, because that's where it's revealed. But this was very interesting. There's pictures throughout, and it's just very easy to read. There's also a TV show that goes with this book that I haven't watched yet, but it's available on Amazon Prime with um, BritBox. So I really want to watch that. This book was very engaging, and again, I'm going to talk more about it during March Mystery Madness in a few weeks. 
And then finally, today I finished um, My Name is Ashley Webb by Shyam Potok. I don't think I mentioned this in my last video, but one of my goals for my like two year plan thing is to reread a bunch of books that I've been saying I want to reread and then I just never get around to them. So this was the first one of those. I read this in um, the summer, the summer before 11th grade, I had to read this for summer reading. And I always tell people it's one of my favorite books, and yet I hadn't ever read it since then. And this is about a boy named Asher Webb, who is a, what is it, Wasid or Hasid, Hasid Jew. And he lives in New York City with his parents, and they live in a very um, small Jewish community within Brooklyn. And he discovers that he has a talent for art. And at first, he sort of avoids it because his father doesn't think it's compatible with their lifestyle, their Jewish lifestyle. But then eventually, Asher finds that he absolutely must draw to make sense of the world and also to make sense of God. And so it's about how he becomes an artist and it's about his view of the world and how his art eventually starts leading him away from his family and his community. And there's sort of a scandal at the end of the book where he paints a very controversial painting and is eventually forced to leave his community because of it. It's a really beautiful book. Um, the writing style is really wonderful. Asher Webb's perspective is an artist's perspective and it's just really wonderful and different than anything I've ever read before. I also really enjoy this book because Asher Webb is a very complex character. Even at the end of the book, when he is sent away from his community, he goes somewhere else where there's another Jewish community because he still very much believes in God and he very much still wants to be, you know, a traditional Jew and live a traditional Jewish lifestyle. But because of his art, he's being torn into two different directions. And it's just a really, really great book. And I have the sequel, which is The Gift of Asher Love, and I'm planning to start that this week and hopefully have that be the first book that I finish in February. And I've never read the sequel, so I'm really excited about that. So yeah, those are the four books I've finished the most recently. Um, coming up, I'm going to read, like I said, The Gift of Ashley Webb, the sequel, and then I'm also going to start on my next March Mystery Madness book, which is The Beautiful Cigar Girl by Daniel Stashauer. I'm going to be doing another video on that book. So yeah, I've got a lot of great reading plans um, going on for this week. I hope everybody's having a great day and you're reading some great books. And me and Milo will talk to you again soon. Bye!